أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة والتسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الردس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, in the chapter of Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, He says, Alif, Lam, Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these beautiful two verses, Alif, Lam, Mim, it is that book in which there is no doubt, a guide to the pious. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Insha'Allah, this episode, we will continue from last episode where we left off. After proving that the uh, Holy Qur'an has no contra- contradictions in it and that it is, a con- it is consistent from the time of Revelation until today in terms of the Arabic text itself, that it still exists today in the same form, then we started speaking about the third point and that is that this message from God should consist of information that no one else knows except for God Almighty Himself. And we started off with the idea of the earth being spherical or three-dimensional. We mentioned that Galileo was persecuted in the 16th century for claiming that the earth is three-dimensional. However, 1400 years ago, the Quran in the chapter of Naba, chapter 78, verse 6, Allah states, وَجَعَلْنَا الْأَرْضَ mihada," And we made the earth as a swaddle or swaddled which means that there is a, not only is the earth three-dimensional, but also it is covered or protected by something that looks like the swaddle of a baby. Now what's a swaddle? A swaddle is actually a blanket that you cover a baby with and it protects them from the elements, right? From the cold or from the heat. It gives them comfort and security. And it's shaped like the shape of an oval or the shape of a child that is wrapped up in a blanket. Now, modern science, I believe only in around 1950, was able to actually discover that the Earth is actually protected by a magnetosphere, a magnetic field that is shaped like a swaddle to protect the Earth from sunbursts and asteroids and so forth. So, that not only proves that the Earth is spherical, but also that it has the, or three-dimensional, but also that it has a protective magnetosphere around it. Now, also, um, we know that Copernicus was persecuted um, also during the 16th century for claiming that the earth rotates around an axis. Now, 1400 years ago, the Holy Quran states in the chapter of Ar-Rahman, chapter 55, verse um, 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, He says, Rabbul Mashriqayni, Rabbul Maghribain. He says, the Lord of the two sunrises and the two sunsets. Now, during the time of Copernicus, and for a long time, as we all know, many made the claim that the earth was flat. However, the Holy Quran states that it is, uh, that uh, Allah is the Lord of the two sunrises and two sunsets. Now, you can't have two sunrises and two sunsets if the earth is flat. You would have a sunrise and then a sunset, a sunrise and a sunset, which means that the earth, if you continue, would actually be rotating around an axis. Now remember, Copernicus in the 16th century was persecuted by the church for making such a claim. However, the Quran 1400 years ago proved this. Today, of course, we know that this is a scientific truth. Who could have known this except for the creator of the of the universe? Who could have known this except for Allah Almighty? 1400 years ago, we didn't have the same tools that we had in the 16th century that were afforded to Copernicus, let alone what uh, um, tools of measurement that we've developed in this day and age. So the next thing that is also mentioned in the Holy Quran, when it comes to the mountains, he says in chapter 78 verse 7, he says, He says, and we made the mountains as pegs in the earth. Now a peg is in the shape of a nail. So those who go camping or know how to put up a tent know that the pegs are those stakes that you um, hammer into the ground so that they hold the sides of the tent down, right? 
Now it wasn't until the, um, the 50s or 60s that we were able, as geologists, human geologists were able to actually take a cross-section of, uh, uh, of a mountain and they discovered in that uh, cross-section that the mountain is actually uh, shaped like a peg in the ground, like a stake in the ground. And this was mentioned 1400 years ago in the Holy Quran when we didn't have such tools of measure. Also, the Holy Quran mentions about the mountains and their movement. It also mentions the movement of the earth and tectonic plates. Now, we only discovered tectonic plates recently. However, in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago, it mentions um, a verse in chapter 27, the chapter of an naml in verse uh, 88, it actually states, وَتَرَى الْجِبَالَ تَحْسَبُهَا جَامِدَةً وَهِيَ تَمُرُّ مَرَ السَّحَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you look at the mountains and you think that they're still, but they actually move just as the clouds move. This is in reference to the movement of the tectonic plates. Not only that, actually, in the Holy Quran, it mentions fingerprints. In the chapter of Al-Qiyamah, chapter 75, verses 3 and 4, Allah says, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ لَنْ نَجْمَعَ عِظَامَ بَلَا قَادِرِينَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ نُسَوِيَ بَنَانَ Allah says, does mankind think that we will not be able to resurrect him and bring back all of his bones together? Surely we are able to bring back even his fingerprints. Now you might say to me, but Shaykhna Banana is a reference maybe to fingertips, not necessarily fingerprints. Well, you know, we only discovered that Fingerprints are a form of identification in the late 1800s. Um, so in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago, this is mentioned, even if it's just fingertips. But I'll say, okay, what about if I tell you that um, air travel as well as space travel is in the Holy Quran, mentioned 1400 years ago. Would you believe me then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the chapter of Ar-Rahman, chapter 55, verse 33, He says, يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِي إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ أَنْ تَنْفُذُوا مِنْ أَقْطَارِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَانْفُذُوا لَا تَنْفُذُونَ إِلَّا بِسُلْطَانِ Allah says, O nations of jinn and men, if you are able to leave the realms of the earth and the skies, then do so. But you shall not do so except with my authority, my permission. So you see then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran here has made it clear to us that he knows things about this universe and he's expressed it to us through this message of the Holy Quran. And this again proves that this message that is presented to us in the form of the Holy Quran has information in it that no one else would know except for the creator of the universe himself. Especially since 1400 years ago, they didn't have the technology or the tools of measure that would allow them to be able to uncover such um, realities. So that's the third point. The fourth point is that the Holy Quran must have information in it that corrects past false claims. Meaning if they are scholars of other religions or major thinkers of other um, faith traditions that made certain claims and they were wrong, that the Quran itself would have to come and make corrections. So for example, we mentioned the verses that were mentioned in the Bible in Genesis, right, about Noah, how in chapter 9 he's depicted as a drunkard. So the Quran comes along in chapter 3, verses 33 and 34, chapter 3 is the chapter of Al Imran, Allah mentions, He says, Inna Allah astafa Adama wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al alameen, dhurriyatan ba'dhuha min ba'dh. So Allah says in these two verses, He says, Surely Allah has chosen and purified. Meaning that they're the most righteous of their generation. They do not defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah Himself purified them. Who? Prophet Adam. Prophet Noah. So the Quran comes along and what does it do? It corrects this false claim that is made in the Bible. And it says He's purified um, uh, the progeny of uh, Prophet Abraham as well as the progeny of Imran. Now the Holy Quran also does, one, does another thing. So in the Bible there's a claim that um, from our Christian brothers and sisters 
that uh, um, uh, Jesus is the Son of God. That's one claim. The Quran comes along and what does it say in the chapter of Al-Ikhlas, uh, a very important chapter in the Holy Quran, um, the main chapter of Tawheed, which proves the uniqueness or oneness of, of God. It says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ where the most important thing for us is those middle verses when it comes to the issue of the claim that um, uh, God had a son. It actually states in the Holy Quran, it says, neither is he begotten nor did he beget a child. Meaning that neither is he created nor does he have a son. So the claim is that Jesus, the son of Mary, himself um, was sired by Allah. Meaning that Allah, well, ayadu billah, astaghfirullah, actually um, had uh, relations with Mary, Maryam, Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, and was able to um, have uh, Prophet Jesus alayhi salam. The Quran is very clear about um, uh, correcting this false claim um, in this chapter of Al Ikhlas. By saying what? By saying that not only does, is Allah not created, but He doesn't have a son. And in the Holy Quran, um, there's a whole chapter dedicated to Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, um, known as the chapter of Maryam, meaning Mary, where every reference there is to Jesus, there is a correction of the idea that Jesus is the Son of God. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran states, uh, Isa ibn Maryam. In every case, he says, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the Son of Mary. Now, we know that our Christian brothers and sisters who are of different denominations, they really boil down to three um, ideologies. The first is the Unitarians, the second is the Binitarians, and the third is the Trinitarians. Now the Unitarians are monotheistic, they believe in one God. We don't have a problem with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the Holy Quran in the chapter of Al-Buruj, where um, he actually states, um, uh, الوقود, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in this chapter of Buruj, He says, the people of the Ukhdud were killed. How were they killed? They were thrown in pits of fire by the Romans um, and persecuted for their belief system. Allah describes them as being mu'mineen, as being believers. They're Unitarians. Today we have Unitarians that exist, right? But then we have Binitarians, those who say that um, there's the Father and the Son. And then we have the Trinitarians uh, that believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they believe in three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, is what they say. Binitarians say Father and Son are one. Now, the thing is, no matter how many times you squeeze your fingers together, whether it's two or one or three, these three can't make one and these two can't make one logically speaking. However, if someone were to claim, well, no, here, we have one as a whole, and then it's fractioned out. Two pieces make one. But if Jesus was crucified according to their claim, then that means that um, God was deficient. And we proved that God is unlimited, which means He's not deficient. Therefore, this has to be a false claim. God is not a compound. And as for the three, the same thing applies. If you say the three are one, just like this finger, if part of it is removed, then God would be deficient. Well, ayadu billah. And therefore, this is a false claim. Now, the Quran also states, um, Meaning, surely they did not crucify him, nor did they kill him. However, it was made to seem that way. Inshallah, in the next episode, we'll continue discussing the issue of proving the message. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to continue to um, brighten our hearts with the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt. I, uh, the last that I ask is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته